Hello, disciples, and welcome to another edition of Imagine With Me, this exciting time when I get to speak with leaders uh, across our church about what they're doing and about ways in which we all are reimagining who we must be as a new church for this very new world in which we find ourselves. Today, I am absolutely delighted to have with us uh, the Reverend Belva Brown Jordan, who is the moderator of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, and um, whom we're so blessed uh, to have serving in this position. Belva all, also serves as the interim president of Disciples Seminary Foundation out in California. And so, Belva, we are just thrilled to have you uh, today. So glad to uh, be able to see you again. We spent a lot of time on Zoom together, um, and I can't wait until there's a time when we can see each other in person. But welcome uh, to Imagine With Me. If there's anything you'd like to say, not only about uh, your role as moderator, but also about the ministry and leadership you're providing at Disciple Seminary Foundation, I invite you to share that so the church knows a little bit more about you and the work that you're involved in. Well, good morning, Terry, and it is a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for the invitation. Um, as uh, serving as moderator of the general board of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ in the United States and Canada, it's been uh, my, my deep uh, pleasure and privilege to do so. We're in a kind of an unusual season in that uh, the moderator team is, um, is serving twice as long as, <laughs> as usual with our, our, the, the adjustments we've made for General Assembly this summer and our virtual gathering uh, that will take uh, place um, in August. But um, so it's, it's great to serve with the others on the moderator uh, team. And, um, and it's been a busy season because yes, I'm serving as interim president at Disciple Seminary Foundation here in Southern California. Um, have been on, on this, this ministry uh, for the past 18 months and a lot of changes have happened. And where we were um, at a time of, of deep stress, we've really turned the corner. We have new energy. We're looking toward the future, We're gonna do a great uh, planning retreat in the fall and get ready to call a new uh, senior leadership, to call a new president um, sometime in the next, uh, next 18 months or so. So um, the combination of the two uh, places of being able to serve and support the church um, is, is pretty amazing. And um, I know we've been talking about covenant a lot and we'll, we'll mention it again a little later uh, in this, this webinar, but it, in both positions, it's about being in covenant with uh, the Christian church disciples of Christ. And, and even though we're not always sure exactly what that means or exactly mm. what that looks like, I feel like we are living it out both as moderator team and as uh, the staff of uh, Disciple Seminary Foundation. Amen. I mean, we in the covenant education materials, which are we want to remind the church, those are now available yes. <laughs> on uh, disciples.org. And we're going to talk a little bit about the governance committee work that brought them uh, brought all that together. But uh, Reverend Dr. Nadine Burton always talks about covenant being a want to, right? And not a have to. So I think it's fair to say that you and the rest of the moderator team, Clyde Hunt, Nestor Gomez, and Stephanie Kendall are doing this work because you want to yeah. uh, and not because you have to. And, and the same is true, I think, for Disciple Seminary Foundation and other institutions in the higher education realm that, that are connected to and in covenant uh, with our church. Um, I'm so excited for the, most people, there's so many people across the church that know you, Belvin, and have known you in different ways in which you've served the church. I think one of the most um, exciting and profound things that is happening in our church right now is the work of the governance committee, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, a standing committee of the general board uh, in which you as a moderator, you choose uh, either service chair or, or choose that chair. Um, and I think it might be helpful for the church to understand how that committee is maybe structured and the different things that we've been working on. So if you could maybe share the, the different subcommittees that are part of that, um, of the governance committee right now. And I think that'll provide a good setup for us to talk about 
the work of the governance committee and how that relates to you know what we've been talking about what we're calling the four reimaginings covenant as you said a story or narrative uh the tools that we use for ministry as well as spiritual practice which uh as you know i'm always saying that grounds everything and is important to everything so maybe you could just give us an overview of how the governance committee is organized right now yes yes it's been uh, great to work with the governor's committee and um you know we've really taken our our assignment and our lead in terms of what we're doing from our design and so we're looking at the, the whole church and we have really i mean a really committed group of people who have divided into four teams of uh, the governance committee is divided into four teams we've got the edu uh, covenant education team that's written curriculum which is out for congregations and other groups to go through the five sessions and give us some feedback, but also to use them as, as one of those tools that they can use to enhance their own spiritual practice as, as small groups within the, in the denomination. And then we've got the uh, design alignment team, a group of people who are combing through the design of the Christian church, uh, disciples of Christ, and, and looking for things that um, still um, fit with who we are and you know because as we age and change everything doesn't stay the same and so they're being very intentional about language about uh, issues around diversity and how language reflects that uh, around our practices. So the design alignment team are work, is working really hard. And then there's a communication team that's helping us with, with communicating and getting the word out and, and helping to, to spread the, the news and, and, and to work with government with the um, covenant education and the design alignment team in this in and how do we communicate uh, and then the fourth group is called is the prayer team and it's interesting when the, the governance committee was in the room talking about how we were going to divide up our work and and you know covenant education and design alignment and communication and i don't even remember who raised their mm -hmm. hand and said well we need a prayer team but once that got it was spoken into the room and people were raising their hands to volunteer to head up each of the teams i raised my hand and i said i want to i want to help lead the the uh prayer team um and um and so it was it's just just really um it, it just kind of seemed to fit with my spirit. <laughs> uh, I, I, I tend to think of myself as a, a very kind of contemplative person and one who uh, in that 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 spirit of being contemplative, prayer is the thing that that helps to move me from point A to point B, from morning to night, for restful sleep, for rising in the morning, and always, always being in, um, in um, um, a, a spirit of prayer. Um, so, so it just felt uh, a natural to raise my hand and say, oh, I'll lead the, the, <laughs> the prayer team. And, and so we, for months, um, while we were, it seemed that we were quiet <laughs> and not doing anything. There are those who have been praying for the governance committee and all of the work that's being done around the covenant education, uh, design alignment, communication, and even praying for our uh, general ministry um, staff that's been working on the virtual uh, gathering that's happening August 7th. Um, it, there's just been constant prayer. And it's not just me, there are a, a number of people out there, and I don't know the names of everybody who's praying, but everybody is praying in their own way to mm -hmm. support what we are trying to do in terms of our denomination and how we give support to the denomination and how we move us forward, not based on any one of our individual will, but on the way that God calls us to be present Amen. with and for each other. So. Amen. Amen. I, I think one of the important things about uh, how the governance team is doing its work is not only bathing everything in prayer, but even choosing uh, the name for that. Uh, you think about the, the names, covenant, right? That's a, a spiritual uh, concept. And we've been praying 
um, that we might help the church understand that as a spiritual foundation uh, for the work we do, not, not just hard and fast rules, but, uh, but coming together out of a sense of, of spiritual um, brotherhood and sisterhood. And also, as the design says, right, bound together uh, in the covenant of love with God and with one another. Yeah. Um, and, and I think those spiritual concepts are, are the things that we really have to uh, reclaim. Uh, Rick Lowry, president of Disciples Historical Society, um, mentioned that when the World Council of Churches uh, was beginning, they used that term design, mm -hmm. um, you know, some 70 years ago, and they were asking themselves, what is God's design for the church? And so when our disciples' ancestors were thinking about uh, coming together in a new way in the late 60s, uh, they also asked that same question, what's God's design for our church? And so as a governance committee, we said we need to be sure that we're aligning our design with God's design. And I think even in, in the title of that particular subcommittee, there was some prayer and, and some, some okay. intentional thought that, that we want to uh, stay connected. Um, what are the, as we think about the work of the governance committee and, um, and, and what's been happening uh, so far, and this may seem like an obvious question, but how have you seen uh, the, the fruits of that prayer uh, in terms of the, the work that's happened? I know we've had some, an opportunity to discuss some of these ideas with the general board twice now. Uh, and as we continue on, what do you think uh, has been the most important aspect of that prayer undergirding it? And, and what do you think will be important about prayer going forward? Yeah. Um, well, I think that, that the prayer has kept things moving. Um, you know, when we first started the conversations about what we thought we needed to do or wanted to do, there was some one hesitation mm. uh, and, um, and, and, and part of it had to do with this question about authority, by what authority do mm. we have to right. do any of this? And we, we looked to the design, but we were prayerful about it. Uh, and, it's, and, and I think prayer helped to open up uh, mm. and break through some of the, the hesitation um, it, I think by reading through the preamble of the design over and over again, and remembering that we're in, that God is in covenant with us. It's a covenant of love that binds us to God and to one another, that in that covenant and in that way, in the way of being bound together, that um, it helped to open up the possibility for the many of creative minds and hearts to put to work mm -hmm. that which they know how to do best, which is to think through, to, um, to, um, to use their head and heart uh, to uh, help to move things along. So, and all along the way, when we got to a point, I noticed I've been in lots of governance committee meetings, each one of the teams, I try to go to as many of those meetings as I can on Zoom. And, and every now and again, we get to a point where things kind of feel like we're at the end or not mm -hmm. really at the end of what we need to do, but we kind of run out of energy. Mm, yeah. And then all of a sudden we start talking to each other and exchanging ideas. But I think that the energy reemerges because somebody it's praying. Somebody prayed for me. Yes, <laughs> yes, know, yes. Had That's me right. on their mind. Their mind. <laughs> Took the time to pray for me. I mean, they prayed for us. Yes, yes. And, and that prayer, I think, helped to, to re-energize us, even when we didn't know who that was praying for us. And yeah. every now and again, and, and most of the time, when because we began things, uh, meetings with prayer and in them with prayer, someone in their, op their verbal prayer would say the thing that touched the heart and our mind of others who were listening. And it wasn't always the same thing. Okay. But it also helped to energize people and to kind of get them out of the, well, I just don't know, kind of low energy and to lift us up. 
yeah. to keep yeah. us moving forward. So that's right. one of the ways in which I think prayer yeah. has been helpful. And with the covenant education piece that the curriculum that's uh, that has been uh, developed, so, so finally developed, at the end of each session, there's just a, a, a prayer, a sentence prayer. Mm -hmm. And it's not meant to to um, to lock people into this is the only way you can pray about this. But here are a few words, prayerful mm -hmm. words, that help to um, to hold what you've just worked on together uh, mm -hmm. in, in 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 doing that the the particular session. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I think it's um, that's so true, and I think we've all on the governance committee acknowledged that. Uh, sometimes we feel like we've been we've been doing so much and and going for for so long. Uh, we're not going to have an in person general assembly, and we're we're not going to meet until 2023. So we can't make decisions until then. But um, it's also important, I think, that the church knows that this committee isn't one that just meets at general board. <laughs> mm -hmm. We've been meeting really for the past since September of 2019 on a very regular basis, monthly. And some of these subcommittees are, are meeting every two weeks in some cases. At least there's there's somebody who's meeting, mm -hmm. right, on, on a regular basis across those four teams. So um, I'm so grateful that you were the one who raised our hand to, to, to lead us in, in, that, um, in that work of prayer. Um, I shared that song in one of my uh, videos a, a few weeks ago when I found out that the water the plants ministry it just so happened that they tell me every week that they're praying for me and that day i just needed that prayer mm -hmm. and so when i got the text that said uh we're praying for you today um that song somebody you prayed pray for me for me <laughs> uh, had me on their mind took the time to pray i'm so glad they prayed so glad. right so um yeah. i think it's so important and church i hope you're hearing the heart and the spirit uh, with which this work has been uh, bathed in prayer, uh, seeking God's guidance above all, not just making changes to make changes, but seeking God's will and design uh, for who we must be. Uh, and when we started this work, it was pre-pandemic. <laughs> and, and now uh, the challenges that face us are, are real. It's not an imaginary kind of change, but uh, literally the ground has shifted underneath our feet. So. Um, Belva, I'm so glad for this time uh, to talk with you today about um, the work of the Governance Committee um, and not only prayer within that context, but you've helped us to better understand how important it is, as you've witnessed in your own life, um, just to cover your steps all through the day uh, with prayer and that the church, if we all if we're all praying right mm -hmm. for our leaders for ourselves our congregations our regions our general ministries uh, if we would just continue to just bathe the church that we love in prayer uh, we know that god will not only lead and guide us but god will keep us mm -hmm. and and god will keep us uh, on the right path i'm so excited uh, that we're going to be together for the august 7th uh, virtual gathering and, and all day a long virtual affair you're going to be with us along with the moderator team and you'll be um, introducing our, our Bible lectures and leading that session. So I'm so excited, uh, looking forward to that. Well, thanks disciples uh, for listening to another uh, edition of Imagine With Me. We've had a wonderful conversation with our moderator, uh, the Reverend Belva Brown Jordan. And we thank Belva for the leadership that she and the rest of the moderator team are providing to the church. The first time in the church's history, where a moderator team will actually serve two terms instead of uh, just the one. So let's give thanks uh, for Belva, continue to pray for her as our moderator. And I hope that you are um, planning to be with us on August 7th. You can go to disciples.org and register. Um, you'll find the schedule for the day. There'll be Bible lectures, workshops in the afternoon and a, a worship service in the evening. Um, I am so excited uh, for that day at a time when we can be as close as we can to one another using this digital space that God has given. So be sure to go to disciples.org and sign up. And I'll see you on the next edition of Imagine With Me. And remember disciples, God loves you and so do I. God bless. <laughs>